Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin and the beauty of mathematics, part 7. We do this series at the beginning of every month. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Also, check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So the purpose of this series is to keep an eye on not just the market cap of Bitcoin, but also the entire cryptocurrency asset class as a whole. And we have our red fair value logarithmic regression line, which by the way, this takes into account all data. A lot of the lines that we, a lot of the fair value lines, regression lines might only take into account say, quote unquote, non-bubble data. This one takes into account all data, okay? So that's the red line that you see. The green line, the dash green line, shows our general lower bound. So if you were to look at this chart and you had no money invested into the market and you just wanted to look at it from an unbiased perspective, you might think, okay, well, when it's down here near the green line, it's historically a great time to move into the market. When it's above this green line or near it, it's historically a great time to move out of the market, okay? So that's generally the idea behind it. Now, if you have a lot of money invested and you're putting the money in up here, by the time it gets down here, you might be rather upset because you're, you're, you might be very emotionally attached to what's going on and you might think that, okay, it's just gonna go down forever and that might cause you to capitulate. But the reason we use this is because it has a way of drowning out all the noise that's out there. Just look at the data, right? Look at the chart, look to see where it's undervalued near the fair value and then overvalued, okay? So as of January 1st, 2021, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is at 774 billion. The trend, the fair value trend, shows 495 billion. Now remember, it wasn't even that long ago, earlier this year, we were at the lower bound, the theoretical lower bound. Of course, we can slightly go below it, we've done it a few times, but the theoretical lower bound. We've rapidly moved back up and have blown past the fair value, and now the entire asset class, as, den as denoted by this metric, is overvalued by 44%, okay? Now, that doesn't mean we have to come back to the fair value anytime soon. There have been times where we move above the line and continue on for years before coming back down. And we could get overvalued by a thousand percent before coming back down. So we're not trying to imply that just because it's overvalued by 44% that there's no, you know, there, that, that it has to come back down. We're simply saying at this point, by this fair value, it is slightly overvalued. And then it thus helps people to really appreciate those times earlier this year and last year and the year before that, when we were able to buy a lot of these cryptocurrencies at less than the, than the fair value of the entire asset class. You know, this would correspond to buying Bitcoin less than $10,000, buying Ethereum less than $300, buying Chainlink less than $5, buying Cardano less than 10 cents, and so on and so forth. So. We have, you know, the new money comes into the space and obviously, you know, they want to look at it and figure out, okay, well, where can they put their money? But the point is to show you that, you know, if you're, if you're committed to the asset class and you're, you're interested in, in, in looking at its macro level evolution, it can really pay off in the long term if when we do get to these undervaluation levels that you are accumulating, right? It can theoretically pay off. Not financial advice. Of course, these trend lines could easily be broken one day but they've been working out really well um, for, for, for quite a while now. So we have moved back into overvaluation territory. Note that we have moved into this territory before, during the last couple years. We had a slight move above it here, and also we moved above it here in 2019. So in terms of that, we're still more or less undervalued compared to how overvalued we were back in 2019. We would need to move further away from the trend line to reach the same level of overvaluation that the entire asset class was at in 2019. And you might say, well, Ben, this really doesn't make a whole lot of sense because this market cap was a lot less than this one. Remember, the fair value is a monotonically increasing function. Therefore, we are comparing it to a higher and higher value. 
our capitulation over here when Bitcoin went to 3100 and the entire asset class as a whole went to a market capitalization below 100 billion did not reach the lower bound green line. It took us over here a, a year and a half later or so. But by that point, we didn't even go back to 100 billion in market cap. So you can see that despite the fact that this was a higher market capitalization, it was at the actual lower bound while this one was not. And this is why I often said this capitulation, in my opinion, was more important than this one over here, right? This capitulation was much more important. It took us all the way back down to the lower bound, which is where we wanted to be. We've seen it every other market cycle. So might as well, might as well keep everything intact. So we're currently at a 774 billion market capitalization. Our trend line is 495 billion with an overvaluation of 44%. Now, if we take the price and divide it by our fair value regression line, let's go ahead and update that. This is what you get. We know there's a typical downtrend here. You can see back over here, we had a, a, a fairly significant overvaluation. It came down a bit. It keeps coming down. We would, we would expect it to continue coming down. The reason for this is as the market becomes more mature, more efficient, then it's probably going to become overvalued less and less and less because we know it's harder to move projects with larger market caps, it takes a lot more volume. And also I think investors will wise up to what's going on and want to try to front run their exits earlier and earlier each cycle because they've experienced what getting burned is like. They've experienced watching their portfolio go up 10X, 100X, sometimes 1000X, and then watching it come crashing back down. And investors are likely going to want to not experience this for themselves. So every cycle, they will exit a little bit earlier each time. That coupled with the fact that it's harder to move market caps that are higher, like Bitcoin, it's harder to go from 100, it's harder to go from 100 billion to a trillion than it is from 10 billion to 100 billion. It just takes a lot more volume to do so. So with this in mind, anything at 100% or lower is considered at fair value or below. We notice we have three peaks. Of course, we could break these peaks one day, right? We could come up and go to higher levels of overvaluation one day. There's nothing necessarily stopping us from doing that. If, however, we were to go there identically in a month or so, and it just went straight up and we just simply extend this move, we just draw a line on that recent move and we go straight up, if that were to happen, it would imply a thousand percent overvaluation right here. Well, what does that mean? Well, if the trend line is around 495 billion, now the trend should be higher by the time we would reach 1,000% 100, overvaluation. If in fact we were to go there over the next few months, which I don't think we will, okay, I don't think we will. But if we were, and the trend line were say around 500 billion, let's just say 495 billion, because that's where we're at. If it were overvalued by 1,000%, which is an 11X, remember 100% is 2X, 200% is 3X, so 1,000% is 11X, that would put, the theoretical top at around 5.445 trillion. Now, what if it takes longer, right? What if it takes longer? And and it could take longer. And that's what I, I do think it would take us longer to reach this higher level of overvaluation. With that said, I will go into 2021 with an open mind. If this trend continues playing out and we get up to a much higher valuation a lot sooner, then so be it, okay? We'll be here every step of the way. We're not gonna miss a beat make sure you subscribe to the channel to follow this every step of the way. Let's get to 80,000 subscribers. So if it takes longer, then you might say, well, Ben, this doesn't make sense because now we're looking at an 800% overvaluation and it took us longer to get there. But wouldn't it imply that if it takes longer to reach this level of overvaluation, that we should in fact be more overvalued as there's been more moments and moving into the market? Well, you have to consider again that the fair value goes up as well. So if, right, if the fair value at the time is 1.5 trillion, as opposed to say 495 billion, if it's a 1.2 or 1.5 trillion, then we could be looking at around a market capitalization peak at over 10 trillion. So the overvaluation is meant to help provide an idea of how far overvalued we are from the fair value line, which as we know, again, is a monotonically increasing function. From here, we've noted this was something we noted in the last video about a month ago, and I think we noted it in the video before that as well. There have been some similarities between this cycle and this one over here, right? We came below the fair value, 
back above the fair value, back below the fair value, a quick peek above the fair value, and then back down, same thing, below the fair value, back up, this was a 2019 peak, down below the fair value, back up, and then capitulation in March. A fairly similar pattern, it's fairly similar. Now, with this in mind, one thing you note is that the time here between these moves got longer this cycle for the most part, except for this March capitulation, but the general time frame between say the red circle and the purple circle has increased. You can see it's increased. So what if we continue to emulate this cycle over here? This is a pure hypothetical. I'm not saying this is going to happen. We're just saying if hypothetically it were to happen, what could that look like? Well, maybe we have a cycle with a double peak. Instead of seeing a nice clean market cycle with a clear market structure, you know, down sideways and then back up, we've already seen a lot more short-term volatility this cycle, right? We, did, we, we came below the fair value, back above it, back below it, back above it, and back below it. This cycle, it was more or less just down below it, sideways, back up. This cycle so far looks more like the first cycle, or the second cycle. This was the first cycle over here, so it looks more like the second cycle. So if we were to continue to emulate that, maybe we get a peak and then we come back down and then get a second peak later on, right? Maybe people think we go in, maybe 2021 is a great year for Bitcoin, I don't know that it would go to 100k, but let's suppose that it let's suppose that it does, or let's suppose that it goes to 50k or 60k or 70k, and then it comes back down. Maybe at that time people would expect it to go into a bear market in 2022. But what if it doesn't go as low as people think, and it continues to emulate something like this, where it comes back down, people are waiting to get back in, and then it never really gives them the chance, as institutional money continues to pour into the market for years and years and years. So maybe we get a double peak that looks something like that. Maybe this market cycle will chart an entirely different course. Maybe we have our first peak in 2019. Maybe we get a second peak, a third peak. What if it looks something like that? And then we ultimately get a trend that looks like that. And so instead of just, you know, uh, one peak and two peak, instead of just a clean sideways and up, what if it just goes, you know, it's like a, um, uh, just ricocheting back and forth, right? you know, complete mania, followed by very short term, um, uh, a, bear, a very short bear market, complete, you know, uh, what's the word, you know, people are just completely, um, their, their portfolios are completely wrecked, they think, okay, this, this cycle was not nearly anything like the prior cycles, they come back down, they sell it, and then the market leaves them behind again, and it puts in a higher high, and then it comes back down, and then it puts in a higher high, and finally, maybe it leaves at an overvaluation of 800%. So the point is, Again, we don't know what's going to happen. We do the best we can with the models we have. We use the data and the data alone to try to look at what the, mar the market cycle could do. Of course, all theories are going to be wrong. Some are useful. So we'll see how things play out over the next few years. And we'll come back and look to see, okay, well, what did we end up doing? What will be the tail of this market cycle? I still think we're fairly early on. If 2021 does not shape out to be a good year for crypto, which I think most people think it will, but let's just not get into that mindset of, of everyone knows what will always happen, right? If everyone in the world thought that Bitcoin was going to go to 100K in 2021, well, it would already be there. So the idea that that has to happen is simply not true. If it does happen, then great, right? We're going to make a ton of money. We'll do it together. Um, but if it doesn't, that's no big deal too, right? It's no big deal. We're still chugging along on the same path that we've always been on. And, you know, here we are after over a decade and we're still slowly but surely moving up. And I think that by the end of this market cycle, we should be around a $10 trillion market capitalization, plus or minus a few trillion. As I've said, we all go to sleep at night and as we drift off, entire slumber, we can't help but think what's a few trillion among friends. Make sure you subscribe. We'll do the next we'll do this video again next month on February 1st and do an update. We'll see you next time. Bye.